it? Come on. I mean, that's that's a pocket change. And we're going to be left forever with something that we don't like. And so all we're saying and asking is please study it. Don't rush. Be short-sighted. If at the end it turns out it's not feasible, okay. But do not even study and and it's insulting to say, oh, by the way, uh, you guys are too late. But it's not feasible to say. Well, and I was we had a five-page letter where we outlined putting it in a trench. We said it's being done out in, in Fresno. I don't have a letter. Right? Okay. And we get back a letter. And I'm not just talking to prisoners, but everybody, city staff feels the same way. They are very, very frustrated. Um, so the city is as frustrated with this. And then I asked to see the analysis that showed why it wasn't feasible. And Morgan says, oh, there's nothing in writing. We have nothing. I put in a public record request. No information. So we want, we're saying this not because we're being obstructionists, not that we're saying we're newbies. We're saying we want something that works for high speed rail and for us. We don't think that's an unreasonable request. And under CEQA and NEPA, alternatives are the heart of the document. Yep. And to purposely go forward and not put in something that is clearly environmental and superior, we know this, we just acknowledge it. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out and not even study it. Talk about low hanging fruit for stopping the project. And I'm not saying anybody want to stop the project, I'm saying just the opposite. Well, I'm saying that I want to stop it. Okay, all right. So, all right. He's all right. right. So, okay. Because he's not the troublemaker. Okay. Oh, he's not the troublemaker. <laughs> but, so I'm just like, all the meetings we have, and this, I'm sorry to go on so long, but every time we have one of the CWG meetings, we're not allowed to talk more than a minute, so it's hard to get anything answered, is we can, we're continually put off and we ask the question, we send a letter, and then we say, you get said, so, oh, you're too late. It's like, no. So, um, I just. So you send this to the city official thing, sir? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. sent it all the way to the city. Did we get it done? I think we did. Uh, uh, really? It's Sergio Massa. No, oh, you know what? Okay, I mean, this one thing. Okay, some of the things here. This is not behind Trump. This is all. Okay. Shoot. What we have said is that it will not, the analysis of a trend will not be included in our environmental document. However, we are working with the city, VTA, and Caltrain to do what I think this is being called the rail vision study, to look at the rail corridor all the way through, through the city of San Jose, looking at it, how it formed regionally, and that is where this is going to get looked at again. Because I speak well, we are also under a mandate from the Federal Railroad Administration to get all these documents done and put in and put out. So we do have a deadline that we have to meet. It doesn't mean it's the end of a study. It means what is being looked at in our environmental document and the authority is working on agreement. It's sort of similar to what they've been doing for the Diridon Station Integrated um, Concept Plan, but this will be looking at the rail corridor through San Jose but working in partnership with Caltrain, the city, and VTA, all of us looking at that to see what are the appropriate options. Because a lot of the things we heard from the city, why they wanted the trench, was, oh, all the traffic congestion. But there's many other places in this corridor, like down in Gilroy and Morgan Hill, that have intersections that have greater traffic congestion than the ones in the city of San Jose. This needs to be looked at weekly, John. It's not just a San Jose project. And what you're also not telling everybody is that as of the first of the year, we're no longer looking at intersections for environmental impacts, right? It's all level of service, everything is the stuff that okay. we're normally doing is all gone under new state law. We're now looking at overall vehicle miles traveled. And the reason is is because they want to force they want to force you out of your car. So the fact that these projects are gonna come and create traffic problems, they will no longer they are no longer, as of January 1st, 
Or this year? No, no, no. Well, that's actually not. That it happened. Is, okay, the Viper Our regulation next came next in. It's actually the 2018 secret yeah. regulations. By April 27th of this year, everything had to be implemented except the adjustment to go from level of service analysis for intersection to vehicle miles traveled. That is actually, you have to implement that in your, any draft document that comes out after July of 2020. The city of San Jose has already adopted this policy. Same with the city of San Francisco, Oakland, LA. Most of the large urban areas have already adopted this policy. It is state regulation. We're just following state regulation. And that's what happened right here for Todd. And we see the results of it, just so you guys know. They didn't do a traffic study. They said they wanted to just right kind of model this, you this is the new direction, so anybody who thinks that... Oh, I know. Day. I've known it for a couple of years. Yeah. A good friend of mine does these traffic studies. Yeah. So he oh. told me about it. Depends right. if you want to be swimming around in boats or deal with a traffic issue. I mean, that's what it's coming from. It's green house gas. The plant is warming up. You've got to get the electric cars if you don't want to melt the plant. Right. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have one last question. Yes. Um, hey, um, just, <laughs> I know, I tried to... Um, so on the back of this, due to the funding constriction, does this timeline look very differently now, or is this still the way we're wanting to move forehead by 2020? So, this, so be... this is the schedule that was in the 2018 business right. plan. It does not reflect the project update report that came out on the okay. first. So what are we looking for in timeline for this one? How much further out of the project push? Is it not? Are we waiting for funding? So are we waiting for someone else to come into office? Like, what are we looking for? Yes, yeah, no, they have to be a friend for years. Yes. You can even see it there. Are you? So we're just waiting for the and a new liberal. I mean, Google wants to find the Apple wants to find the Google. So the project update report, I mean, and that's implementing sort of, you know, the the division of uh, Governor Newsom is to focus on Merced to Bakersfield to Fresno rather than getting the connection first of all into the, the valleys of our connection. They're looking at what David said. Yeah. I don't listen to him every day. Yeah. 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 Um, but the goal there is to deliver that project by 2028. Okay. And that currently, you know, I don't know whether they had the fun of watching our board on, they had the board meeting. At uh, the board meeting, they reaffirmed the funding requirement to get this initial construction section built, get the bookends, which is the 25th grade, the Caltrain electrification road in Clarkstown in Southern California, and all the environmental documents finished. That's what the board approved two days ago. And then that was 15.6 billion. And then to connect to uh, Bakersfield and up to Merced, that takes 20.4 billion in total. And that is our current total um, identified funding. So right now, to go outside of the Central Valley and complete the, the bookend project, we don't have a funding source identified. So I would assume, you know, if that's the division study, the current focus would be, you know, in the Central Valley. So anything else would happen after 2020. How long does the EIR, I mean, let's say 10 years ago? Generally, each, the, well, there is actually no defined one. Uh, Federal Highway Administration does have a policy that from any major decision which counts as scoping, circulating the draft document, circulating the final document, and then making a record of decision, no more than three years between any of those. Oh my God. You guys might have to start all over. So, yeah. over. so well, we'll just do then that's special habits. No, I should read Maybe what it comes down to is like certain things like geology yeah. doesn't change much. Right. Traffic changes a lot. So generally what happens if you go <coughs> one to three years, you need to sort of update the traffic. Uh, depending on what happens, like I did work on a project, you know, we was we started it in early, you know, 2000, 2001, you know, dot com traffic going everywhere. You know, five years later, it took that long to get it out, you know, dot com bust, no traffic. So we said, okay, we did the traffic counts, traffic's dropped. We said, okay, we're just going to leave the, use the old numbers because that's a more conservative deal. So it depends on how to do But traffic is the big one that changes the most. The other thing is, especially if you happen to hit one of those 10 year cycles where you get new census information, that's another thing because now you do have new population data, especially on the environmental justice work, that's a lot. 
So there's certain events that happen when, because we are, sequence essentially says you need to use the best available day. So if things have changed, you do you need to do an update. The older the data, I just want to point out, you know, the less defensible the document becomes. I mean, it's, you, you've got to evaluate it. Do I go forward, or is it better that I stop, reevaluate, and start again? You know, and it's always thinking, you know, people want a decision, why haven't you built it yet? But, you know, don't rush it, you know, it's like, which one do you want to do? So, yeah. If you haven't identified a source in the area, why continue to move forward with the EIR? Why not just push that off for another five years so that it's a little bit more relevant? Because we already know it's 2028 before the lower section and the central section gets done. Why not just push that whole project off? Because you've got the Caltrains and the rest of them well, that are still doing there's, stuff. There is that. There's also, I mean, you know, just when we approve the project, there's still, you know, depending on how quick you do it, five to eight years to get from project approval to being able to start to run trends. The other fact that I mentioned, I mean, you know, is funding is a vein and a benefit. The federal funding that we do have and isn't being taken away at the 2.5 billion, which came from the hour, that was contingent on finishing the environmental documents by 2022. Oh, so that's a big So that is what's really job. We, you know, yeah, we can wait another year, but you know, we want to get it done. You know, the, the other advantage is, is once you have the project approved, it's on the books, and then when another plan comes in, they have to consider that plan. So it's not, oh, I'm going to ignore high speed trend because it hasn't been approved. I'm going to go blindly and you know, do this development. You know, once our project is approved, they can still go ahead and build the development, but they can't say, oops, didn't realize that high speed trend is going to take it out. Um, so I think that helps I mean, for everybody. Um, also, once it's approved, that is a point where you can, you know, start appealing for like a hardship acquisition. You know, like you know, you say you're, you know, you're, 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 you've got a different job. You've got to leave the air, so You've got to sell your house. You know, yes, you set your the value that you can demonstrate that the value's gone down because you nobody know, wants to buy because they all they have to be coming up. You can then, you know, go through the state and demonstrate the hardship, and then you can get compensated that way. So, with the approved project, it has certain benefits. It has downsides as well, you know, depending on how you do it. Yeah. You mentioned that a little, a little bit ago that uh, the four alternatives you're looking at are going forward to be presented to one preferred alternative, right? Yeah. Eventually, right? And then you said, what I'm leading to is, you said that trench options could be looked at later. Said something about that. There is. Yeah. That so there is. Okay. And I don't know all the details. Right now, they're working through. Right now, the goal is to do a corridor level study. So this is more like a planning level study of the partnership of High Speed Rail, the City of San Jose, Caltrain, and DTA. Okay. So effectively, the transportation agencies, excluding Caltrain, Caltrans, because we're talking trains here and the city of San Jose for sort of their jurisdiction. The same people that have been doing the disc study could do it on air. Um, the thought had been is maybe just expand that, but it's like, no, this has really got a separate focus. It's more of a corridor study, not what does the station building look like. But it will very much follow that. The part, so it's actually four equal partners to look at this. It will be done separately, so it'll be a different consultant. Uh, VTA is sort of responsible. I mean, really, VTA is the one that provides the transportation here. Caltrain happens to provide the train service for VTA. How can that process get started? It is starting Sorry, already, sir. and we're going to our board next June, uh, next month, to give them a briefing on where we're on that. It is outside the way. As soon as this, are you going to bring up the trench option? And that is where that would be looked at, and plus, how do we I deal with all the intersections? Who's going to tell them to look at it? We, we, we already know, you've said several letters. Can you send a letter that you're going to look at? It? When that agreement is, yeah. I'm assuming that agreement will have to go through the city council, we'll go to the ETA board, Caltrain board, and our own board, and they will have the document, and that's what you will see. You won't get to see it before the board sees it, I'm sorry. I doubt it. But honestly, what we feel, or I feel, you guys are never going to sit down. I'd be real on the trench. That's not part of the plan. No, no. It is not part of the plan. Not, not part of the common plan, true. Yeah. And if it isn't part of the common plan, it will not happen later on. Like, oh, no, no, no. There, there, is, all the time there is a situation shit. in Fresno where they went through, forward with the EIR and they chose their preferred alternative 
all along in the background, the community was working on a community generated option, and ultimately the community generated option was took. That that did happen. Yes. Next. Big thing we gotta play. He's got his own. He's got his own rodeo. He wants to buy it. They might have the cameras. Yeah, we'll add those in. Is it technically feasible? Not. I'm not talking just money or 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 politics. To have to transition from to to put a trench in in portion of it and transition from the trench to add grade and another portion. Is that a is that technology yes. people? And again, it depends on the configuration, but yes. That's what we were asking you, for. The, but the That's thing is, when you go down and go up, and you've gone 110 plus miles an hour, so, then you need yes. miles well, before and miles on. I mean, the transition, transition, yes. I mean, to go from a trench coming up, it takes about two and a half thousand feet, half a mile. Um, you know, one of the issues is, you know, with a trench, and you know, and the problem again is if if you ease in that trench, then you'll start with a one percent grade. Whereas if you're in high speed train or Caltrain that have electric units, they can have like a two and a half percent grade. So it varies on the configuration. And then also when we were looking at the trench, one of the issues we found is if you do the trench, you are gonna undermine the foundations for all the existing overcrossings. So to do the trench you will have to rebuild yeah, but if you did the trench deep enough, then you just have a bridges. You know, that would be called a board tunnel, and that is a whole different level. Of well, how deep is a trench then? Maybe well, because the trench, trench you've got to build it down. Yeah. So if I put a foundation, the trench is an open view. If I put a yeah. foundation here, yeah, and my trench is here. I've got to, you know, say this was the existing bridge foundation. I have to build a trench here. I have to take out this foundation while I'm building it. I can put it back afterwards, maybe, if I'm deep enough down and overhang it. Or I've got to completely support this existing structure. There's certain practicalities of construction, which at some point, yeah, that's what adds to the cost and the complexity. Would it be feasible to, to do a trench at the areas where the where the where the uh, grade cro at grade crossings are a significant issue and transition to um, at grade by at Blossom Hill. That, That's what, what we asked. What we looked at was a five mile trench yeah. that effectively went down at Capitol, came back up. Uh, well, it has to get up at Blossom Hill because if we don't get up, then we have to rebuild these. So it was a five mile trench, and that is an, an additional billion dollars. And it was a billion dollars just for that. Uh, no, a billion dollars extra. Extra, right. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> Can we um, make those analyses? I, there we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, before you answer, it's a true question. Where does Morgan say they don't exist? Well, when you asked that question, John, that was correct. There was a draft memo which I have now well with Forrest to finalize. It doesn't have the same level of detail in that you are asking for, but it does lay out all the things that we've looked at. I it's maybe 10, 12 pages long. We get it through that. I would. I, we have dropped it. I would put in. I have to put that we can take it back. It is the. It's a summary of the evaluation on Monterey. It's a memo that I put together that pretty much summarizes. I'm sorry, recent or? It goes back. You know. I mean, we started looking at stuff. You know. I mean, we. I mean, the. Was it a year ago? Alternative two was developed in 2009. So I asked her, the, the memo was drafted. Three weeks ago. The memo was drafted. Really, sorry, let me rephrase. The, what the memo really is, it's an evaluation of the city generated option. It's really what its focus is. I asked her for a cap of that. It is, I know. And she came to me and I said, yeah, I got half. I got, it was halfway through it, but it never got finalized. Right. Because the problem was, the city generated an option. We were looking at it, we had to right. do evaluation. By the time we had we worked with Caltrain to do the evaluation, the city had changed their city generated option, and now they hadn't elevated the amount. And so we started looking at that. And then by then, our business plan came, plan came out, and we had a blended configuration. So then we started looking at that. So the city generated option never got finalized, and it's evaluated. That's why, because the goalposts keep on moving. So, where in this process did you guys come to the community and say, what would you like to see in terms of alternatives? Uh, originally in 2009 in scoping, 
and then we came out. John, you asked the question. You want to know? Yeah, I mean, they just answered. They did come out to us. We did have a meeting. That is when we originally came out. We had a whole series of meetings. John, you want to hear the answer or not? I'm sorry. I apologize. So, we did a lot of work of the original stuff through 2012. 2012, the business plan came out and said we're going south. So, this section got put on hold until effectively the beginning of 2016. Beginning of 2016, April, we came back out with the existing range alternatives plus the viaduct because that had been added in. And that was the range of alternatives, and we asked for input at that point. And, the um, and I fully really understand that. everybody has always asked for a trench underneath Derodon. There is a book that fit, which then the city consultant actually concurred with, of why that is not a feasible option. Everybody keeps on asking for it, but the analysis is there. Again, the, and then that is where I think that looks like where the, first, the trench came up. You know, because once we're talking viaduct, or I think people realize, you know, the original alternative took care of all the grade separations. It may not be a particularly pedestrian friendly environment, but it grade separated everything. Now, when people saw other options, such as the viaduct, it was like, that's going to be visual, it's going to be noisy, you can't put it in a tunnel. And that's what we started looking at. We looked at a, a tunnel, the city did their own assessment, um, and we pretty much concluded that one. And then, you know, the cost word always comes in. People assume the trench is cheaper. It's a little bit cheaper, but not much. And so then we looked at that as well. I want to take a pulse on everyone's evening. <laughs> yeah, we do How are you all feeling? Well. I'm feeling like you should order some pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on your body. <laughs> <laughs> There's some cookies back there. Take out of the cameras. <laughs> you know, as we wrap up this meeting, I urge you to take photos of it and Make sure you get after the alternative numbers. And I think when you roll it up, it'll be hard to roll it out again, and it's hard to like. So when we talk, when do you get the electronic version? I think. We, uh, you got, I think Julian gave you the smiley face now, didn't he? I didn't want him to. Okay. Yeah. Well, he should be giving you the smile. He gave you the smiley face. I'm gonna start taking this down. So I mean, okay. So if <laughs> anything, what it means, John, is that the engineering meets our requirements. There's some okay. formatting issues, and there's some ways we want to rearrange the joints to make them more accessible. To I mean, yeah. When I go through all this, you can sort of just about follow along. When we just put these out in the document, there's not, you know, 1,500 of these to explain these to everybody. So we're trying to format it so at least they're accessible and people can work their way through. We haven't done that yet, but the engineering we've done is not going to change because that's the basis of the environmental stuff. Yeah, pull them all so they're smiley down. faces. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think we got it all in front of us. Yeah, well, thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.